Welcome back to the Musician's Health Lab. When considering musician's health, it's important to consider allergens. And there are two main types of allergens, inhaled respiratory allergens and skin allergens. In 2016, there was a news article that swept the world when doctors in Britain blamed the death of a 61-year-old man on his backpipes. For years, the doctors had been stumped at why there had been such a stark decrease in his lung capacity. He didn't smoke, his home didn't have mold, but what the doctors didn't know was that his bagpipe was filled with multiple different types of fungi. And his instrument isn't the only one. There are only a few studies that exist on microbial contamination of wind instruments. A 2010 study found that reed instruments like clarinets were more likely to be contaminated than flutes or trumpets. However, the inside of wind instruments, all of them, they all had bacteria as well as mold or yeast. Another study from France in 2019 looked at wind instrument contamination and found that 95% of oboe, bassoon, clarinet, and saxophones were contaminated with fungi. There was another study out of Australia that provided anecdotal evidence from band directors who said that 50% of their students had some sort of respiratory distress that required therapy. So these different microbes, they have been known to cause different medical problems such as hypersensitivity pneumonitis, tuberculosis, asthma, and other pulmonary function problems. In the U.S., approximately 8.3% of the normal population have asthma, but among wind instrument players, 20% of flutists have asthma, 17% of clarinetists, 21% of saxophonists, 17% of trombonists, and 15% of French horn players have asthma. In a French study, that number for wind musicians with asthma climbed to 28% compared to the French population, which typically has an average amount of asthma of 6.4% among their population. So with all of this in mind, what can we do about this problem? There is actually no known current standardized cleaning procedure for wind instruments. And if you think about it, it's quite a challenging question to answer because you want to make sure that the wood can also be preserved and that any type of cleaning solution isn't going to damage the wood. There are some companies that have experimented with UV light, though no data has validated how well the portable UV light actually cleans the instrument. Others have experimented with rubbing alcohol for the mouthpiece, which can be a good option, but it can also stain the mouthpiece. And then there's the obvious case, or maybe for middle schoolers, the not so obvious case of making sure that your teeth are brushed before playing, making sure your hands are washed, at the very minimum, rinse out your mouth before you play, because those food particles that can get stuck in your instrument, they absolutely will harvest bacteria and fungi. In all of the main studies, the microbes were located in the microbes and reeds. So making sure that those areas are clean will be vital to your health. I hope that there will be more studies to come very soon and that we will have better cleaning solutions to offer. But until then, that's all we have. The next allergy we're going to talk about are contact allergens. And these type of allergens might be encountered through metal allergy or wood allergy or other irritants like resin. And most often these allergens will manifest as rashes or swelling in the arms or hands, even the neck or mouth or lips. And in many cases, this is known as contact dermatitis, or it's a rash caused by a direct contact with a substance. Probably the most common among instrumentalists is nickel because nickel is so often found in instruments. And many uh, brass instruments are fully brass. Many woodwind instruments, they have nickel keys. So it's just something to be aware of. If someone has a nickel allergy, um, it will often show up in the form of a localized rash. However, however, in several cases, studies of musicians with nickel allergies said that their constant exposure to nickel allergies actually meant that they developed a more severe case of allergies um, to anything containing nickel, which included foods like chocolate and soy. So one way that we can avoid this is when choosing an instrument for band or orchestra, it could be really critical for the teacher to ask if the student has any known allergen. 
This may go a long way in helping students choose instruments that they won't have to give up later. Um, there are, of course, other solutions if you are already uh, in love with the instrument that you're playing and you have later found out you have a nickel, nickel allergy. Um, they have plastic mouthpieces. You can use gloves if you're a brass player, um, nitrile gloves if you're a woodwind or string player, which sometimes are not a great option. Whether you're new to the idea that instruments can cause allergic reactions or if this is something you've been dealing with your whole life, I would love to hear your story. I would love to hear solutions that you found. So please leave some comments below. As always, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Instagram at Kensley Beal. I'm very responsive there, and I would love to hear any way that I can help you. I'll see you next time.